Hello everyone. So in this video we will discuss about the hardware solution for critical section problem. So uh, already we discussed about the software solution. So now we are getting into the hardware solution. So here if you look at this in case of single processor system or the uni processor system if you are working with the critical section problem so obviously you may get the critical section problem whenever you receive any interrupt in your system but if you don't get any interrupt so which means even if you get the interrupt in the system if you disable that interrupt then automatically your critical section problem will not be arised in your system right so because if you are not enabling i mean if you are not uh, disabling the interrupt obviously it will enter and uh, so you may change you may change the sequence of the order of execution of the instruction by any one of the process whatever you are currently executing so it will be interruptible and uh, uh, so we cannot follow the same sequence and we will not receive any the correct output so in order to avoid it in case of single processor we can disable the interrupt and uh, we are not allowing the interrupt to execute so that is what the thing we can do to avoid the critical section problem and one more thing uh we can also proceed with the non preemptive kernels non preemptive kernels means once the process has been allotted to the cpu it will not be preempted at all until its completion of the execution so it should complete its entire execution then only the pro, uh, cpu will be given to the next process to execute right so this is what non preemptive kernel so by using this kind of approach also we can avoid the critical section problem but if you are working with the multi processor environment so what happens here it is highly difficult to disable the interrupt whatever we did in uni processor so it is highly difficult because it will take much more time to disable the interrupt and all so it will delay the current execution of the process right so even in the multi processor or in case of a real time system so it will delay the uh, current execution of the process so Uh, this may affect the system efficiency also the particular process will not receive the final outcome in a particular time so this could be the system efficient i mean um, decrease uh, in the level of system efficiency so we cannot this could not be the feasible solution in case of multi processing environment so even though we have some other solution like hardware solution so we have some set of hardware instructions in order to execute and those particular instruction must be executed atomically the word atomically which means if you are if you start to execute the very first instruction and you should you should not be interruptible at all until the completion of the last instruction so that is what atomically atomic execution which means suppose if you have three number of instructions so in sequence so you if you start with the first instruction so any in the middle of these three instruction execution so it should not be interruptible at all so uh, execution of the uninterruptible instruction in sequence is said to be the atomic atomic execution right so all these instruction must be executed atomically so that we can achieve the race condition which means in a sequence of order in some specific order of the instruction must be executed so we should not stop in the middle of execution so here we have some hardware instruction so the first one is test and set so it is a finite one hardware instruction and it is of type boolean and this is used to check the particular variable and it is a common variable which can be accessed by more than one process and that particular variable either it could be a false value or the true value because it is of type boolean right so here uh, we have some set of instruction in order to uh, swap the variable in between two variables i mean swap the values in between two variables so this could be done atomically so that we can receive the final output as i mean correct output uh, so here we have the set test and so before that i will tell about the structure of the pro any one of the process so how we are implementing this hardware instruction so here also it starts with do while statement so here we have the two variables so first one is waiting of i so it is of array variable which is initialized as true and the key value is true and in the entry section so this is what entry section so in the entry section so what condition we are checking while waiting of i and key 
वाइल वेटिंग ऑफ आई एंड की सो वाइल वेटिंग ऑफ आई मस्ट बी फॉल्स सो विच मीन्स इट इज अ प्रोसेस पी आई ओके सो इफ इट इज अ प्रोसेस पी आई इट्स वेटिंग ऑफ आई मस्ट बी फॉल्स देन ओनली इट कैन एंटर इन टू द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन सो वेन इट विल बी ट्रू इफ इट इज वेटिंग सो इफ अदर प्रोसेस एंटर्स अगेन ऑलरेडी इन द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन सो एट द टाइम इट शुड बी ट्रू okay suppose if it is not true then it, this particular process can enter into the critical section and what could be the value of key key value so initially we have assigned it as true and key value so which we are getting so initially we have assigned it as true but we are also checking with the test and set instruction and what could be the lock value so that we have initialized as false uh, initially so that value we are passing as arguments while invoking this test and set instruction so in the test and set instruction it will assign this particular value as false and that will be uh, passed over to this key variable in waiting of i equal to false so what does it mean waiting of i equal to false then only which means the process pi can enter into the critical section it is uh, for in the entry section it is ready to enter into the critical section but it is checking for any other process has already entered If suppose any other process was already in critical section, then this particular process cannot enter. So it has to wait in this while statement itself. So that is what we are doing. And afterwards, it will check and this particular statement is not true. Then it will assign the key value as false as well as this waiting of i equal to false, which means it is. It it uh, now it gets the turn to enter into the critical section. This particular process pi. so after entering into the critical section so it comes out and it will check i mean it will do the exit section as either lock value as false either waiting of i to i mean waiting of j to false so here it is just changing these any of these two variables either lock is equal to false or waiting of j to false so if any of these uh, two very uh, two values has been changed and so it is just allowing other process to enter into the critical section right so by this uh, statement by this statement we can achieve the mutual exclusion and by these two statement we can achieve the progress so this is what so one more criteria we have so that can be achieved by these statement that is bounded waiting so what do you mean by bounded waiting which means we are checking a j value as i plus 1 which means your next process so you, this particular solution is applicable for more than one, two process it is not restricted to only two process so we can use it for more than two process so here we will be having some set of process like p not p1 p2 or p i p j like that right so j value must be i plus 1 so which means it is the next process mod n so why we have given mod n because if it reaches the last process let it be pn and your next process is nothing but p not if it reaches the last process again it has to come back to the first process that is what bounded so or the circular kind of implementation and we are checking while j is not equal to i and uh, not waiting of j so waiting of j is false and uh, this will j is not equal to i so which means you are checking any other process is not actually uh, waiting to enter the critical section then the particular process whichever uh, checking this while statement can enter into the critical section so that is what it is allowing each and every process to enter only one time at the maximum only one time so it should uh, give a chance to another process all other remaining process to enter into the critical section so this is what we how we are achieving the bounded waiting so we have achieved these three criteria uh, in order to avoid the critical section problem in the system right thank you